So our next speaker will speak about uh, privacy. It's uh, Anani Marcus, and it will explain you privacy pretty easy. Let's applaud him. It's more like pretty easy privacy, but it's fine. <laughs> So uh, I am a council member of PEP Foundation, a non-commercial entity. Um, first of all, uh, uh, who, who knows PEP here? Okay, not so many people, so that's the right talk because it's not very technical. If you want to, to have more technical information, we have a stand with uh, Knut Haller um, in the K building. I, I'm also not developing at the engine level or stuff like that, so don't come up with C questions and why this crashes and stuff like that. For us, uh, for at me. Um, so first of all, um, yeah, that's PEP, uh, uh, pretty easy privacy uh, with an emphasis on the E because we have already good privacy, you know, but uh, it, it's not really easy. At least it's our experience with doing crypto parties and, and stuff. So people in the end are not really able to use it, at, at least not regular users. Um, first of all, what what PEP is not. So PEP is not yet another crypto tool uh, with a closed uh, user base, uh, like encrypted mail services which are around, or certain apps which have uh, uh, clear identifiers like phone numbers and stuff. So PEP doesn't uh, impo impose you a certain identifier. You can freely choose depending on the communication channel you use for email, of course. It's your email address that you usually can choose freely. So we are also not a platform provider, so we don't have any metadata. So it's just about tools on the end user devices. Uh, we are also not a crypto project. We are just using crypto already there. Um, we are also not replacing the tools already there. We're just using them and making them easier to use. And uh, we just start with email, but th that's, uh, that's uh, not the end. It's, it's, it's just the beginning. So. Um, and then probably the positive list, what are we doing actually? Um, first of all, um, it's kind, uh, we, we kind of abstract already existing crypto tools like GNU PG or for iOS uh, of uh, because of licensing. We have to use Net PGP because it's a little bit broken or it was a little bit broken. We, have, we, we forked it and continued a, a little bit development on it. And for other uh, protocol, uh, for other crypto standards, of course, you will need other libraries, but yeah, they are already there. Um, it's designed, uh, as said, for, uh, um, for, for starting with email, but then we will add more um, um, crypto standards later on. It's also built with the idea that you have a unified uh, mailbox. The idea is that you, if, if you use Signal or WhatsApp or whatever, you usually have the user base you have there. But uh, other users just have email addresses or use completely something different, like Threema or whatever. And the idea of PEP is to bring this all together in one place by supporting all the involved crypto standards. So you have one box with all your contacts, and that the most secure way to c communicate with them will be used by default. Uh, and this encryption stuff will be done automatically, so keys are generated automatically for e every address you have. If you have several mail addresses, uh, for each mail address, uh, a key pair is created, and yeah, and then you can just start to encrypt without that user has to do anything. So it's zero touch and hassle-free, no dialogues, uh, talking about uh, revocation certificates, about private key stuff like that. So we also avoid these terms uh, for the end user. But of course, if you're a power user, what most of you will be, you can also go into advanced settings and use the, the things already there. And if you already use OpenPGP, I don't have to tell you how to use it, so it's already fine. We, uh, I can communicate already with you, but we also have to think about the, the normal people, uh, which are really not able to 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 to, um, to use this kind of stuff. So why are we doing this? So a little bit of motivation. I think we have a global problem first of all. So there is the NSA surveillance complex. If uh, if you look at um, uh, if you look if you look at it globally, so we have uh, really big issues. There is also China, Russia, whatever doing ma mass surveillance. And if you are a little bit more narrow in your thinking, like the Swiss tend to be, uh, we also have mass surveillance. This kind of things here is Onyx mass surveillance interception system for satellite-based communications. It was passed in Parliament as a multi-purpose building for 20 or 40 million francs. Uh, so without any legal basis and. Uh, Afterwards, they created the legal uh, basis. So the, so the Swiss are, it's a, it's Switzerland is a, it's a nice democracy, but there are also strange things going on. By the way, they, uh, they started to build this after Echelon was revealed. Um, so yeah, interesting, interesting approach. So instead of, of stopping this kind of stuff, they just said, oh, let's build our own stuff. 
Um, yeah. If you look at, at an email context, let's say, you have your um, original NSA slides uh, leaked by Edward Snowden showing how mass surveillance on, let's say, a linguistic basis is done. So you, if, you, if you are, uh, I mean, ACVs, advanced uh, conventional we weapons, or VMDs, weapons of mass destruction, uh, GovTorx, this, this, that's attack for government organizations. So you can, you can, you can search um, in emails with topics. There are lots of methods of, of text mining, machine learning to do that kind of stuff. And we should just encrypt everything so this stuff cannot be done anymore. Um, also, if you look at a little bit more general, so for written digital communications, what we are doing, I mean, PEP is about encrypting text, not, not voice yet. So if you look at it in this more general uh, sense, yeah, you see that they just scan everything like HTTP requests, calendar bodies, archives, document bodies, chat bodies, email bodies. So this stuff, we just have to encrypt everything. So this stops. Um, how does PEP, uh, I said we started with email, so how does we differ from OpenPGP? Because there is already OpenPGP uh, implementations around, RFC 4880. Um, so PEP uh, doesn't use, uh, do doesn't use uh, key servers by default because a social graph is disclosed, either by queries or if you sign around and upload your, your public key signed, everyone can see with whom you communicate. Of course, you can do key signing parties and, and try to, to dissipate a little bit stuff. But still, it's a little bit of a problem. Also, you have a, a key re-encryption problem, a problem, by the way, which all these platform-centric solutions have, like WhatsApp. So you, you don't really know with whom you're communicating as long as you didn't um, uh, check the identity with fingerprints or whatever. Uh, the, the sender's public key is attached by default to, to, uh, to any email. You can also switch it, uh, this off in certain contexts or in companies or organizations if, it's, if, if it doesn't make any sense. But uh, yeah, for, the, for regular users, it's like this. Uh, the subject field uh, gets put into, the, into the, the body and then mapped by the, by the mail user agent into the real body. So graphically, it's, it looks like uh, the real subject, but, um, but it's, it's in the body, in fact. Instead of fingerprints, we use trust words. These are just mappings to natural language words, like English, German, whatever. And um, this, is, this we do because we don't believe that people are able to, to compare uh, hex finger, uh, fingerprints very efficiently, uh, especially if you, if you take into consideration that you, can do that, uh, you, you should do that via a side channel like phone or something. So we just um, use here trust words. They, I think they are from LibreOffice uh, with uh, swear words removed by native language speakers. Um, PEP is also a rating system, so we rate uh, how secure communication is on a user basis or on a message level basis. And this is shown with traffic light semantics, uh, that, that means with colors. So I will show an example afterwards. Um, so for example, uh, SMIME with commercial CAs we consider as not secure, so we won't show that encrypted. Uh, plain text message, of course, also not secure, but PGP would say is secure. Uh, and other standards, of course, too. So uh, here is an Outlook example. That's PEP for Outlook. The, the source code exists, so um, you can also compile it yourself and check if you want. There, there are also other um, projects for iOS, for Android, for Enigmail. Um, so if you, if, if you write your, your, your first email, uh, usually um, you don't have the public key of the contact, so down here it's shown unsecure. Then you just write your, your plain text message, your pub, public key is attached, and when you receive an answer from your, from your, uh, from your body, then probably you, you can import also his public key. And as of then, uh, the communication is shown secure, but then, of course, you still have to mitigate for the man in the middle tag. For that, you can do this trust words comparison. There you see, you can just call him and, and ask if, if, if the same trust words are, are shown on both devices. Um, for, that, for that to work with common trust words, you, of course, you, you need to put the fingerprints together and, um, and uh, map them to, uh, to words. Um, I can, uh, I, afterwards, I can, I can bring details at the stand, for example, because we, I think time is, is running away. Uh, when, you, when you did that, so when your con contact was verified, uh, it's shown secure and trusted, so you can be quite sure there is no man-in-the-middle attack possible anymore. If something happens, if someone is tampering around with your, with your communication channel, then it will turn red, and then it's written under attack. So you can, you can, you can still communicate. That's the most important thing in PEP. Uh, uh, people are never, uh, never um, stopped from, from communicating, but you, you, you at least should know that something is possibly wrong. 
So what is coming next? We are we are working on on fixing keysync. Keysync is is a, is a is a is a is a protocol to to uh, transfer uh, private key material uh, through your dif different devices, uh, where the common identifier is, for example, your email address. For that to be uh, secure, you need, of, of course, or trusted at least, you uh, trusted insecure. Sorry, you need you need to 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 make your channel green. So you need to check again your trustworthiness on both of your devices, and then you need to agree on a, on a key to use for the future. So we, uh, that's a cloudless, um, platform independent um, uh, key synchronization protocol. Uh, we will also add more uh, tr uh, transports here with other crypto and uh, GNUnet in, in, uh, with, will also be added in 2.0. GNUnet is, is completely radical. They want to just um, yeah, replace the whole internet stack. It's an official GNU project. Um, and yeah, uh, synchronization of fourth data can be done like calendar and contact data. And we, of course, uh, we are community focused here. We want us to make this an, an internet standard. So we are drafting uh, internet drafts for ITF. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, politically, we also want to fight uh, mass surveillance. Uh, so we also we are we are really political. So we are not just uh, uh, doing techniques here. For, the, uh, for, uh, for uh, some notes on the foundation, which I am representing here, the foundation is Swiss-based, tax-free, non-commercial, and controlled by 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 by, by radicals in, in the area of of digital rights. So there there's no compromise in here. So you have to replace us if you want to change our what we are doing. What we are doing here, um, the foundation holds ownership on the core technology on the GNU GPL V3 and also on the trademarks. This is to make sure that no one, uh, that people uh, 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 don't release software called Pretty Easy Privacy, which is backdoored. Uh, also to avoid backdoors, we require everyone who calls their stuff PEP Pretty Easy Privacy to, to to run a code out it, but we don't force them to open the source code. So uh, it's just someone has to independently look if there are no backdoors. Uh, I mean, WhatsApp, for example, it's not so clear what this tool is doing in, in the end. And we also do political work. We supported referendums in Switzerland against mass surveillance. We failed a little bit around, but we will continue on uh, other ways there. Uh, we also collaborate with certain projects already, like Enigmail. So Enigmail PEP will come out, I think, Thunderbird 52. Um, uh, um, that's March, April this year, if we manage to do everything. We also collaborate with GNUnet and with ISOC Switzerland. That's for, probably interesting for uh, internet standards. And we are open for more collaboration. So it's not about competition. It's about collaboration here. I think that's all. And we don't have time anymore, probably. But you can come to the stand otherwise. Or do we have time? I mean, well, okay. Too late. Can I send HTML mail with PEP? Yes. Uh, uh, he asked for HTML mails with PEP. Uh, what is done in PEP is uh, in the engine, there is something which converts the HTML to text, and then you have a, a text file in the, in the attachment, and the HTML file, and the subject line which we encrypt is in the text, so we can map it uh, back again. Uh, Enigmail had issues with that kind of stuff. Where I was involved in these discussions there, so it, it, it actually works. But of course, there will always be some bugs and some UAS and stuff, but we will fix all of this. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. <laughs>